Um, no, it, it, it's been, um, if they give me words to read, but I've got my name is Figure Prince so I'll think about oh, yeah, that yeah. bit first from you when I go. Um, but no, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure to be involved and to sit constant cooperation. There's been no politics in it from start to finish. And as a, I was a new MP when I first started this, and it's quite ironic that what Jonathan worked for me is taking the pictures here, but Jonathan back there is the guy that introduced me to local trust just after coming through the doors. Um, it's been such a privilege to be involved with this. And the people that I've seen, met, and listened to as we've gone through this inquiry. You know, I've been delighted, and I'm going to read the proper words. Right? So, <laughs> so <laughs> long to post this um, It's great to see so many familiar places in the room today many of whom have participated in the various stages of the inquiry. And I'd like to thank my thanks, so extend my thanks to everyone who's made a contribution, whether it's in writing, whether you've turned up for the inquiries, whatever, it's all important as to, as to where it is. And as Diana said, it's a process we began as a group all the way back in April last year when the Leveling Up report came out and we felt that we needed to make sure that we looked at the people that was really most in need of being supported by that process. So we've heard in a testimony in Parliament of 21 expert witnesses, delighted to receive over 45 written contributions from such a range of individuals and organisations in response to the open call for evidence. And all of it is built on the work that the APG has done since being established in 2020, where our publications, research and analysis have called for more devolution of power and resources in the local communities, as well as targeted investment in left behind areas to help them catch up with the rest of the country. Our inquiries found that to be successful and sustainable, levelling up must also reflect local needs and circumstances. It can't be something that's done to people with decisions over investment and priorities made by Whitehall, or indeed the town hall, and simply imposed on communities. So the, 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 the phrase that we went through the time, you know, you always sit, um, talk about not doing things to people, doing it with them. I think we evolved that to move me, it's instead of doing it with them, to get to a stage where we create the capacity to do it themselves. That's the end game. The end game is not to be involved at all. It's not to be doing it with them. Um, back to the list. Um, it needs to be a process that not just involves local people, but is led by them as the real experts. The best place to know what is done to improve local outcomes. I think as politicians, the thing that we come to learn very quickly is what's important to people, this place their place, it's where they live, it's what affects them on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and as we've heard over the course of the inquiry, we know how powerful community-led change can be in turning around the neighbourhood's fortunes. We presented in so many examples of this amazing work that local residents are doing in the most challenging of circumstances. I'm sure not everyone will agree with all the recommendations in the report, but we definitely believe that its central premise of improving local outcomes for areas facing challenges from deprivation and a lack of social infrastructure is one that deserves consideration from all sides of politics. We make a recommendation in support of a community wealth fund. I think one of our good days was when that got on the face of the bill, wasn't it? Um, I remember going into the meeting with Diana, to, with the, the, the then minister, and uh, both coming out with our. Did he say that? You know, because it was not a fight at that point, was it? It's lovely. Um, which would provide long-term funding over 10 to 15 years. This would enable residents to spend money on their own terms on the projects they judge to be most important to them. So we're delighted the government is committed to using the unclaimed money from the dormant bank and asset bank and, bank and building society accounts to create the new fund. We want to see as fast the progress made in its implementation as possible, and most importantly, ensure that it's targeted at those left behind neighborhoods that this APPG is advocated on behalf of the who need it most.